Hello, everybody, and let's get to our daily Europa project. So the news number one, falling of a rocket in Poland. The top news of the yesterday's evening was the fall of a rocket uh, right on the territory of Poland in Przewodów. That's near the border with Ukraine. As a result, two local people died. Currently, there is no official information about who exactly launched this missile, except for the assumption of Polish authorities that the missile was Russian-made. Judging by the latest statements of Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan and President Joe Biden, it could also also be a missile of the Ukrainian air defense system. But let's not make quick conclusions and try to understand what was the root cause. And of course, it's not worth talking about a full-scale attack by Russia in this particular case. After all, on November 15th was one of the most massive launches of missiles and attack of drones on Ukraine. Our soldiers shot down 75 cruise missiles and more than 10 Iranian drones. And with such intensity of strikes, it would be irresponsible to be sure that not a single missile or its fragments will never fall on the territory of the states neighboring Ukraine. Let me remind you that on October 31st, the fragments fell on the territory of Moldova and before that it flew into the airspace of this country. So now not only Ukrainians are suffering from Russian missile strikes, but also neighboring territories. In particular, in the Federation itself sees the fields, uh, the consequences. Let me also remind you that videos of the rocket launches that have been uh, published on social networks several times, for example near Belgrade, where the rocket fell several hundred meters from the launched position. In general, Russian military equipment and soldiers do not always meet high-quality standards. We can also recall the plane crash in Yeysk, where, uh, according to official information, 15 people died. And the pilots, instead of saving civilians and their homes, uh, catapulted saving themselves. And here's the main question arises. Uh, with what equipment Ukrainians fight against the second army of the world and will other countries who are on the Ukrainian side ever engage in active military operations? Indeed, we have already received so much military aid from our Western partners that even an hour wouldn't be enough to list it. However, countries also could send their military units as well. And many people in Ukraine understand that world politicians do not want to enter into an open war with Russia. And this is understandable. But at the same time, the same politicians can provide Ukraine with more modern military equipment so that we can still continue and more effective to fight the enemy on our own. After all, yesterday in Ukraine, the NASM's air defense system was officially used. And do you know how effective it is? It shut down each of 10 missiles in each of 10 launches of the defense system. So if we had several more alike defense systems and Russian missiles simply wouldn't reach NATO's eastern border. Also, NATO can partially close the sky over Ukraine, which our political leadership has been asking for since February 24th. By the way, Yesterday, I read a Ukrainian expert who wrote a very reasonable opinion that uh, the fall of the missile in Poland gives NATO two options. To do nothing and to give a hint to Russia that it can be continuing such action or drag NATO into a full-scale war. However, modern wars uh, require modern and extraordinary or even asymmetric approaches. And this will be the closing of the sky over Ukraine, or at least part of the sky. And Russia will no longer be able to terrorize the Ukrainian energy industry. So it will give a chance to respond to the attack and still stay out of starting a full-scale war by NATO. Yet. So let's get to another top news of today. Rammstein. 
The seventh meeting of the Contact Group of Defense of Ukraine was held on November 16th, this time online. This was reported by Pentagon spokesman General Patrick Ryder. In particular, they plan to discuss current efforts of uh, providing Ukraine with the means it needs to protect its sovereignty from further Russian aggression. Already from our own experience, we can say that we will see the consequences of this meeting in 30, 40 days. However, we can talk about what the ministers should talk about at this meeting already. And despite what Ukrainian politicians say about modern air defense systems of F-15 and F-16 aircraft, I would like to talk about a slightly simpler solution, as for political and as in implementation. So, I'm talking about the training of Ukrainians, the Ukrainian military. Yes, indeed, nowadays Ukrainians go through numerous schools with their British, American, Canadian and other compatriots. But let's talk about training for the future. Just imagine our asses, the pilots' asses, will be taught to work with modern technologies. Other countries don't need to give us weapons just to teach to work with it. And the Kremlin receives a signal. If uh, there's further escalation, we will provide weapons and Ukraine will use them immediately. It is no longer necessary to spend months on training. Ukrainians already know everything and therefore, if you violate some agreements, they will receive it. And that will be enough. Well, that's not will be enough, of course, but as the next step for the further, further cooperation, exactly what we need. After all, back in February, Ukraine could only dream of HIMARS and NASM systems. Now, look at their effectiveness. Yes, this is modern technology, but this technology requires skillful use, and Ukrainian soldiers have proven that more than once. They mastered it very quickly and showed much greater efficiency than expected. In addition, the war in Ukraine allows companies that make this weapon test them, their products and uh, developments in real conditions. After all, the Russian equipment at the parades was one of the best. And now ask anyone in the world whether they would like to buy equipment from the Kremlin or would it be better to find it from other suppliers? By the way, the time Rammstein will be interesting because only a day before Ukraine suffered a massive missile attack, then, uh, and I think uh, that uh, our Minister of Defense, uh, Alexei Reznikov, will be able to convey his idea in international uh, grounds to international colleagues. By the way, he joked on his Twitter lately that a huge number of Ukrainian agents work in the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. They traditionally initiate rocket terror right before Rammstein meetings. Let's go to the other very interesting proposition now from the President Zelensky. Ten steps from Zelensky. On Tuesday, the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, addressed the G20 participants, uh, or as we say in Ukraine already, G19, where, among other things, he proposed 10 steps for ending the war. And you know, these steps are very simple and at the same time effective. It is the main is wish. The wish that have Ukrainians. Ukrainians has it despite the fact that Kremlin claims that they are behind the negotiations. But here it is important to mention Chechen leader Jahar Dudayev, who said that Russia always offers negotiations when it is difficult, when plans are destroyed, in order to get time, strengthen forces, correct mistakes, find a weak point, and then strike again with a new force. And maybe you could argue with that, but it is worth looking at how Russian behaves. After all, there were two Chechen wars, and there were also two Minsk agreements. Where presidents agreed on the stabilization of the front line, but uh, then there was the capture of the Balseva and the general mass attack of the 24th of February this year. So, what will prevent the Kremlin from doing the same now? 
this is a rhetorical question. So let's talk what does Ukraine offer. First, radiation and nuclear safety. This is a priority task because Ukraine gave up nuclear weapons in 1994 and received guarantees about our security. And now any talk about a possible nuclear strike is groundless. This is the first thing. And secondly, a nuclear strike can cause such consequences that no institution will be able to predict. This is the contamination of the territory and, most importantly, the removal of the taboo on the use of these weapons. And who then will not allow Northern Korea or the same Iran that supplies Russia with weapons, but instead develops its nuclear program to use such weapons for its own purposes? Only after every person and every politician understands that it is impossible to use and even bluff with the nuclear attack, it will be possible to talk about further steps. And in general, I am not sure that after repeated defeats on the military field, uh, Putin will not dare to take his last chance to win this war. Second one, food safety. Ukraine is one of the largest exporters of grain and food in the world, and so the issue of food security is more important not much for Ukraine as for the whole world. After all, lack of food is the cause of possible political confrontations and revolutions. It is precisely uh, on such contradictions that Russia is trying to build its foreign policy. Therefore, Feeding the hungry is a matter of security, not only for Ukraine, but for the whole world. The third one is energy security. Since October the 10th, when Russia launched its first massive attack on Ukraine, no one knows better than Ukrainians what it's like to live without water, electricity, heating and other communal uh, home services. And if in Europe countries, people at least have the opportunity to decide whether to turn on electricity or not, taking into account its costs, Ukrainian do not have such an opportunity. There is not even a certainty that the lights in your apartment will not be turned off tomorrow as a result of the blows. Not to mention the heat in cold winter. Let's go to the fourth proposition release of all the prisoners and deported persons. Only after the resolution of these humanitarian issues can we proceed to the consequences of more military ones. And an all-captive for all-captive exchange may be the next step. Why is this important? Because Ukrainians remember the shelling in Olenivka in July, when Russia, in order to force Ukraine to negotiate, struck a colony where Ukrainian prisoners were held and then for several days uh, they didn't allow international organizations such as the Red Cross or the uh, United Nations humanitarian mission to the scene. And the exchange should be all for all so that there is no desire to bargain. Fifth, implementation of the United Nations Charter and restoration of Ukraine's territorial integrity uh, and the world order. To be honest, I don't have much faith in this point, especially in world order, because all in our history runs forward, not backward. But from other sides, without the return of Crimea and Donbass, any further talks will have no meaning. After all, if you even imagine that Ukraine will agree to territorial executions, then who can give a guarantee that other countries in any part of the world will not want to do it? The sixth proposition is withdrawal of Russian troops and uh, cessation of hostilities. After we restore uh, territorial integrity, Russia must withdraw all its troops. After all, the military uh, contingent of the aggressor cannot be on our territory. The seventh, restoration of justice of all victims of the Russian attack. Of course, we are talking about material assets, but also about moral ones. And how to evaluate all moral experiences due to moving, being in storage, loss of health and others, we still have to work out 
this world's mechanisms. The eighth one, countering ecocide. Of course, we are talking about mine uh, contamination of Ukrainian lands. After all, statistics are known that one year of war leads to 10 years of demining. And these are huge territories that must be sown and harvested. What we have already talked about in food security, but ecocide can also be nuclear. Nobody knows about th this like Ukrainians, because it was our country that had the biggest radiation impact after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And from March, the Russians control the largest nuclear power plant in Europe, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And the fact that there is no understanding of all the danger should not even be doubted. After all, Russians are shelling Ukrainian Nikopol city from the territory of the power plant. And at the same time, they do not hesitate to shoot at the nuclear power plant themselves. If you do not remember, then I will remind you how the Russians told the incredible story to the specialists that arrived with mission to this plant that the rocket turned 180 degrees before falling, and all for the sake of blaming Ukraine. Moreover, many chemical industry enterprises are still operating in Ukraine, which can also be used for ecocides and uh, chemical attacks. So this is also worth considering. The ninth point, preventing escalation. The world must develop such mechanisms that will prevent further possible escalation. And the main thing is that these must be effective mechanisms. We still remember the lessons of the 20th century when the methods were allegedly developed, but uh, they didn't prevent the rise of Nazism in Germany and the Second World War. Therefore, it uh, will be worth working on this point too. And finally, the tenth point, confirmation of the end of the war. Only knowing that there will be no new aggression, we'll be able to talk about fixing the end of the war. We can talk about the responsibility of the Russian political elite and uh, every Russian who supported the bloody policy of the Russian dictator. Yes, the implementation of these 10 points will take more than years, more than one year, maybe even a decade. Anyways, however, it should be clear to every citizen in the world that such an act of aggression against a neighbor should not be repeated. Our grandparents who survived the Second World War are still alive today. Ukrainian old people are forced to go through this war again. And you know what? Ukrainians want no one in this world to go through this again. And for that, we have to win this war with Russia. Thank you. <laughs>